Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Scavelli, and this is End Time Revival Ministries. My very special guest for the show is Reverend Frank Adams. Tonight's topic will be on leadership. Reverend, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Steve, for having me. It's our pleasure to be here with you and uh, with your uh, viewing audience. Thank you, sir. Pastor, um, I, I'm going to ask you a few brief questions. Um, feel free to uh, flow into the spirit sure. and uh, just be in a teaching mode. Or, or Now, please briefly tell me about your, uh, your born again experience. Sure. Yeah. Well, I was born again July 28th, 1968. Uh, I was an inmate in the Winter Haven City Jail. I was AWOL from the Army, drunk and disorderly, resisted arrest. And the Lord ordained that time for a pastor to come and share the gospel with me. And I was gloriously saved. And one year later, uh, I was in Bible school. Yeah. One year after that, I was pastoring my first church. Wow. And uh, so I've been born again. My entire life yeah. has been a life of searching to know God, mm -hmm. to know how to live, how to, how to walk with God. Uh, how to be a leader, uh, which is what our topic is about today, the, uh, our book, Leadership. Yeah. And, uh, but out of that born-again experience, I became a new person. I never read a book before I was converted. Wow. Never read a Bible. Wow. Never attended, but maybe a handful of church services, and those were usually weddings or yeah. Christmas. But when I got born again, I truly was transformed, and I became a student. I was a poor student. Uh, all of my life, but God so transformed me that for somebody who had never even opened a book or a Bible, now to come to the place where I've written over 28 titles of resources and materials, I have over 5,000 volumes in my library. Wow. So God did a real transformation. Yes, He and, did. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm grateful for that. And, uh, and uh, the only explanation for my life is that I truly got born again. I didn't try to re reform myself sure. or better myself. I really, God sure. changed my nature sure. into a new creation. Now, the Lord has gifted you in the spiritual realm of leadership. Um, when did you realize that you were ordained to be a leader? Well, first of all, leadership is, a, is a, one of the gifts of the Spirit. Okay. Um, However, leaders are usually not born. I, I won't say that there are no leaders that aren't born leaders, but, but leadership is something you learn. Yes, sir. Okay. And I was obviously pastoring my first church when I was 22 years old, mm. so I'm obviously involved in leadership. I knew nothing about leadership. Sure. I knew nothing about how to lead my own life, yeah. my own family, much less a congregation. So my life, out of desperation, there, it became a pursuit to learn. Yeah. There's two, there's two steps to wisdom. Okay. The first step to wisdom is knowledge. Yeah. Uh, knowledge is the accumulation of facts. Okay. Uh, so I, I did a lot of study and research, and, and then the, the next step to wisdom is understanding. Okay. Which understanding give, is insight on how those facts uh, apply to life. And then when you actually have knowledge and understanding, and choose to walk in that understanding, mm -hmm. then you become an individual of wisdom. Mm. But uh, wisdom is an automatic. God does tell us to pray for wisdom. There are times when we need wisdom. We pray for wisdom. Sure. Obviously, my life, thousands or maybe 10,000 times, I've asked God, oh God, I cry to you for wisdom yeah. and insight. I know nothing. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. I'm sure. incompetent and incapable. Sure. And in that cry, uh, is the reason that he opened that whole realm to me. Yeah. And, and I became just a sponge. I went yeah. to every seminar on leadership. Sure. I read every book I could. Yeah. And uh, eventually absorbed that material and yeah. it began to influence the way I lead people. Now, is the church failing in the realm of leadership as a spiritual teacher to the world? The, the church, by and large, is in a, in a state of a leadership vacuum. Okay. We have a lot of great men that are leading a lot of great works. Um, 
However, leadership is something that is, uh, that is definite. Leaders um, reproduce leaders. Okay. And I'm afraid that a lot of times we leaders are satisfied with equipping ourselves. Okay. But all the, the fivefold ministry, apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, mm -hmm. are all for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Yes, sir. So we need leadership everywhere. Yes, sir. Leadership is somebody who knows where they're going and how to get there. Yes, sir. And is able to take folks there. Yeah. And I think, uh, although there are many exceptions to that in our nation, yeah. there's been a great movement of leadership. Sure. I think the day-to-day nitty-gritty down where I live in my real work-a-day world, uh, leaders need to be raised up in that world. Okay. Uh, we need leaders in our family. Yes, sir. We need leaders in our nation. We yes, need sir. leaders in our corporate businesses. Yes, sir. And uh, so I think God uh, wants to raise up leaders. Yeah. I think, uh, I don't think I was born with the gift of leadership, okay. but I think I was taught leadership. Okay. I learned leadership. And so I think leadership is more, uh, is a learned behavior. You mm -hmm. can learn the skills, yeah. you can learn the techniques, but then they have to become a part of your life yes. and who you are. Yes. And then it just becomes second nature. You just are the leader. <laughs> you walk in the room and you are the leader. Right. You recognize that. So there is an anointing for that. Sure. Uh, now, uh, I think we have to be careful because sometimes we we receive an anointing and uh, we have to recognize that God needs to temper that anointing and train that anointing mm -hmm. so that that anointing, anointing is bent in a proper okay. uh, direction. Sure. And uh, so I, th I thank the Lord for it. I think I am uh, anointed to lead yes. and uh, I think part of the anointing is getting ready. And uh, so... I like that. Yeah. Now you've written this book, Leadership, Right. Biblical Truth for a Generation of Leaders. This is an awesome book. Um, I haven't read the whole book, but right. the parts I have read, uh, for me, it, it is a teaching. <clears throat> it is a teaching in area uh, that we all need, uh, that each pastor or teacher or, or evangelist, you can pull information, nuggets and, right. uh, from this information, and you meditate on it. it it's truly an awesome book. Thank you. Go to his website, uh, check it out, buy it, and uh, you will not be uh, displeased. Now, you mentioned in your book, Leadership, right. that leadership has a voice. Right. Now, could you explain that? Yeah. Okay. Leadership is verbal. Okay. Um, in other words, whenever God calls a leader, He gives that leader a voice. Okay. And people respond to that voice when they hear the voice of a leader. My sheep hear my voice okay. and they follow me. Yes, sir. And uh, so leadership has a voice. Now what happens is whoever's voice is being heard is the leader in that context. Right. Now God places, let's call it, let's say for instance in a local ministry, a local church. Oh. God calls a minister, uh, a pastor. He gives him oversight with insight. Mm -hmm. He becomes the voice of God to that congregation. Okay. Okay. So if he doesn't speak with clarity okay. and confidence, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then there are others who will speak with clarity and confidence and he'll create a vacuum. Okay. And then all of a sudden he's not a leader, he's a follower. Wow. So the purpose of this book is to help leaders have a voice. Yes. There's uh, 74 lessons mm -hmm. or titles here, mm -hmm. 240 pages. Yeah. And I sat down, they, they began, I began early in my ministry when I began to learn about leadership. I sat down on a regular basis with all of my staff, mm -hmm. handed them out a lesson, mm -hmm. taught them, mm -hmm. taught them the priorities of mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. taught it what it meant to follow God, taught yeah. it how to read your yeah. Bible. Somebody has to teach that. Sure. Uh, somebody has to say, this is the way walk you in it. Yeah. So the leader not only has to have a voice, he has to have, people have to have confidence in his voice. Yes. Uh, he not only, leadership not only has to be uh, of character, yes, sir. but it also has to be of competency. The yes, uh, Bible says that David led them by 
the integrity of his heart yes, sir. and by the skill of his hand. Yes, sir. So you have to have competency and, and character. And uh, so to me, leadership is, uh, is verbal. Uh, as I say here, leadership is values deep, uh, vision focus, and verbally driven. Mm -hmm. When a leader changes, when a leader speaks, mm -hmm. changes take place. Yes, sir. If a leader is intimidated, doesn't know what to say, yes, sir. isn't hearing clearly from the Lord, doesn't have a word from the Lord, then his flock will be confused. Yes, sir. And so if he can have a voice so part of, uh, part of these, uh, the purpose of this book mm -hmm. is to help pastors, not to, to mimic my voice, yeah. but to take these lessons mm -hmm. that are biblical mm -hmm. and take those and translate them to their situation, their circumstances, yes, through their own giftedness yes, and communicate that to their people. Yeah. So the, the, the vision is to assist, to uh, help pastors yes, sir. have a clarity of voice. Yes, sir. Somebody has to speak. Yes, sir. If who's ever speaking is who's being followed. Yes, sir. So a pastor, when he speaks, he begins to gain credibility yes, sir. because they follow him and their success. Yes, sir. And one of the, the lessons in here talks about the leader. Uh, one of the things that a leader does is a leader leads their organization mm -hmm to success. Yes, sir. It is their responsibility yes, sir. by God to create in that organization success. And that individual will be uh, accountable unto God. He has to be accountable. He's not only, he's not only, I always say uh, to people, when you're in a, a, a church setting, yes, sir. Uh, most churches have church boards, elder boards, whatever. I always say to those leaders, the, the leadership role is the pastor has oversight with insight. Yes, sir. Now, there, there isn't a dichotomy in leadership. There isn't the pastor is, a, uh, is an executive branch and board members are uh, a legislative branch. Mm -hmm. So I had a board member tell me one time where our responsibility is to make sure that uh, uh, the pastor is doing what's right. So we are responsible to yea and nay him. Uh, that totally gets you in an adversarial relationship yes, with your church board. Yes, sir. A church board and, and leaders in the church are actually the first assistants to the pastors. Yes, sir. And they are there to the assist the pastor. Yes, sir. The board doesn't have the care of the church mm -hmm. uh, separate and distinct from the pastor. I always say to everybody, it's my responsibility to care, bless, and benefit this congregation. Your responsibility as a leader in this church is to assist me in doing that. Yes, sir. God calls that leader to do that. Yes, sir. And he gives people to assist him in doing that. Yes, sir. And the, the role of the leadership team, whether it's a church board or elders or whatever it might be, uh, that relationship is a microcosm of what's going to be the mentality in that congregation. So I always have unity, mutual respect. I always say to people, I always listen yes, to my people. Yes, sir. They walk with me. If there's something that they're not convinced of, then I wait. Mm -hmm. uh, a good leader will always wait for folks to get caught up. Uh, if you get too far ahead in your leadership, they'll mistake you for the enemy and shoot you. <laughs> so you got to stay within uh, means. But you have to bring leadership along. Yes, sir. And eventually, here's the best thing a leader can do. Mm. If your organization sees you as the answer mm -hmm. to their problems, yes, sir. then you're the leader. I like that. A leader has to come to an organization mm. with answers. Yes, sir. And he has to get those answers from God. Yes, sir. Not just from his uh, repertoire of, of, uh, of tricks, but when God gives direction and he speaks that direction, God will honor that direction. It will bless the people. It will, it will serve the people, not the leader. Yeah. I like that. It'll benefit the people. Yeah. Because primarily leadership is for the benefit and the blessing of the people. Mm -hmm. And so God sends us there to benefit and to bless the people. 
And so when we come with that servant spirit, then we realize that we're there to serve God's interest among those people. Hmm. Now, um, does God make a promise to leaders? God makes a lot of promises to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, there are, the, the Lord will, when you pour out your life, yeah. the Lord said, he that leaves father and mother yes, and land yes, yes. follows me. Yes. Um, they'll receive a hundredfold in this yes, life yes, and yes. in the life to come, sure. eternal life. Uh, he does uh, make promises in the sense that he, his biggest promise is this, hmm. lo, I'm with you always. Okay. I'm always with you. Yes. But he always has to say to leaders, oh. Don't be afraid. Yes. Leadership is a terrifying experience. It is, it is uh, full of opportunities of failure. Moses was scared. Mo Joshua, God spoke to Joshua three times mm -hmm. in the first chapter of Joshua. Yes, sir. Have not I said to you, yes, sir. be strong yeah. and very courageous. Yeah. Well, the reason is because he was in the tent terrified. <laughs> Moses, whom had been taken all of the responsibilities now gone, he knows when he steps out of that tent, mm -hmm. those same million and a half to three million stubborn, stiff-necked, hard-headed uh, people were going to be his responsibility. Yep. <laughs> and so it's enough that leadership is not for the faint of heart. I hear you. Fear is the predominant emotion that you'll deal with. As long as you fear men, yes. you cannot serve God effectively. Wow. You have to deal. The fear of man brings a snare. Yeah. But those who trust in the Lord will dwell safely. It is a fearful thing to do leadership, but you wouldn't do anything else. Yes, sir. My, my primary gift is teaching. Yes. But I also have an administrative gift. Yes. I have a prophetic gift. Yes. I have a gift of wisdom. Yes, sir. I have a, a gift of knowledge and um, discernment. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of those gifts work together. Gifts usually come in clusters, not single gifts. Okay. You, you very find, you very seldom, or if ever, yeah. in Scripture, do you find someone with a single gift. Hmm. That's interesting. You'll find a multiple cluster of gifts. Yeah. An evangelist won't just be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. It may be a healing evangelist. Healing. It may be a deliverance evangelist. Yes, sir. It may be a teaching evangelist. Yes, sir. But multiple gifts. But the fact is that a man's gift mm -hmm. is what determines his ministry. Wow. See, God, man doesn't get a ministry and then God gives him gifts. Yeah. God gifts a man and a woman yeah. and, and children or whatever, and then he gives them a ministry. Wow. See, I, I tried to be an evangelist. Mm -hmm. And I utterly failed at being an evangelist because I'm an evangelist. And the only evangelist that went around traveling and preaching pastoral messages. <laughs> and I realized that my gift is, is, uh, is teaching. Yeah. So, uh, so I don't try to present myself. Uh, my pastor friend, whose church we met, at, uh, met you at this weekend, mm -hmm. is an evangelist. Yes, sir. He has a gift of evangelism. Yes, he sir. communicates. And he does a tremendous job that I am in no way could ever even begin to try to compete with him because he just has the gift. I don't. Yeah. But uh, we have gifts that, uh, that differ, but we serve the same God. Now, is there a, a call to faith, a, a call to follow, and a call to fish? Yes. Whenever God calls an individual, every individual that God calls, mm -hmm. the Bible says that we have been called under the fellowship of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So all of mm -hmm. us have a calling. Yeah. Okay? We do have a call to faith. Yeah. God calls us to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, sir. believe His message, yes, sir. believe His person, believe His nature, yeah. believe His promises. Yeah. So He calls us. Now when He calls us, all of us have this. You don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be ordained. Everybody's called to faith. Secondly, then they're called to follow. Yes, sir. Nobody is ever called to faith that that faith does not include mm -hmm. following after Jesus. Yeah. We follow Jesus for these reasons. Number one, mm -hmm. we follow Jesus to be with Him. Yeah. We follow Jesus to be like Him. Okay. And we follow Jesus so that we can represent Him to others. 
And then every believer has the calling to be a fisher of men. Yes, sir. I will make you fishers, fishers. of men. Yes. Your life, your testimony is the bait yes, sir. that God uses to win people to himself. And not only do you have uh, that call, but, but you're talking of, from that first chapter in our yes, sir. book. Yes, sir. You're also called to fix. I was going to ask you, you, you also state that there is a call to fix. Can, can you explain yes. what you mean by sure. that? When the disciples, when Jesus called Peter, he was out, um, he was out uh, cleaning his nets because he was a caster of nets. Mm -hmm. A little while down the down the beach, he finds James and his brother John. Yes, they're sir. mending the nets. Yes, sir. That same word to mend mm -hmm. is the same word in Ephesians four, where it talks about perfecting the saints, fixing the saints. Okay. When a net is broken, you mend it so that you can return it to service. I like that. So, the part of the ministry is that people come to us broken. Mm fractured, yeah. we mend it. It literally means to set a bone that's broken okay. so that it can be put back in use. I like that. So the ministry yeah. is the church's responsibility is to mend the broken Got it. so that they, and everybody has that calling. Mm -hmm. So we're called to faith, yes, sir. we're called to follow, yes, sir. we're called to fish, uh -huh. and we're called to fix. I really like that. <laughs> now in chapter two of your book, you mentioned the five leadership essentials. Right. Um, there's just five or? Well, these are these are the five essentials that, that we mentioned. Okay. And uh, I'll just turn there just to refresh my memory. Yes, sir. But I probably can do them. First of all, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a follower of mm -hmm. Jesus, the first thing you're gonna do, one of the first essential, is you're gonna have to have fellowship with Jesus. Mm. Leadership is leading out of who you are with Him. Yes, sir. So the essential of leadership is I lead my people or my organization out of the fellowship that I have with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if a leader's not having fellowship, he's not hearing yes, or sir. she's not hearing. Yes, sir. So he just is shot in the dark. Right. Or he's doing what everybody else is doing. Sure. But if I have fellowship, then I minister out of that fellowship. Yes, sir. So it's an essential. Right. I got to have time alone with God. Sure. And then secondly is fellowship, is the walk of the leader. Mm -hmm. I, before I can be a leader, I have to first be a follower. Yes. Um, before, I can, before I can take that position, I have to be a good subordinate. I have to follow direction, follow instruction. The person who serves faithfully in another man's ministry will himself be given his own ministry. Yes, sir. I, when, I, when God calls us to leadership, he calls us to serve to make other people successful. Yes, sir. That shows that our heart's right. Yes. The work is what is important, not our sure. uh, aggrandizement. Right. So when I make somebody else successful, God will make me. You're actually sowing. You're actually sowing. Sowing into Be that. And, it, and it's an issue of character. Yeah. Uh, I want to make somebody else successful. Yes. So that God can uh, trust me. The other one is stewardship. That's the that's the work of a leader. Uh, Paul said, "Let a man so consider us as stewards of the mysteries of God. Mm -hmm. What God has given to us, mm -hmm. we're accountable for." Yes, sir. He wants our gifts to bring benefit and profit to Him, to His kingdom, and to people. Yeah. So. It doesn't need to be sitting on a shelf. Yes. And that's one of the reasons that my wife and I have written our books. Yes. Because God says, uh, you've got to be a steward of this. Yes. So now we're able to mentor more people through this book. Yes. That pastors can get this that we'll never meet. Mm -hmm. And they can actually take these lessons, mentor uh, their people, and raise up leadership. I'll tell you this. There is no organization or congregation that can rise any higher than the level of its leaders. Mm. If you raise the level of water in a, in a uh, river, all the boats rise with it. Mm. If a pastor will raise the level of leadership quality in his leaders, mm. 
he'll raise the level of that entire church. I like that. The entire church. So he has to be a steward of those things. Timothy, uh, he, Paul told Timothy, pass them along to people that are going to be faithful. Yes. And the other thing uh, that's there in that second chapter is the worship of a leader. Yes, sir. Leaders have to be worship. Yes. They have to be worshipers. Yes. And uh, worshipers mean to ascribe worth to him. Yes, sir. The most important relationship that a leader has is his relationship with his Lord. There are too many leaders who are serving apart from yeah. that intimate relationship with Jesus. We're actually empowered you betcha. Um, by worship of him who is holy and pure. Absolutely. And uh, there's an anointing for that, correct? You betcha. Now, uh, we're getting close to our time. Uh, just a real quick question, last question. Okay. How important, I know it's a simple yeah. question, how important is the direction of the Holy Ghost? I mean, you can't do this without the Holy Spirit. God never intended for us to be educated yeah. to the point where we do not need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. He never intended us to get to the place where we don't need Him. Mm -hmm. In all of our learning, we must have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Because that which is, that which is uh, of the carnal mind produces carnal results. Yes, sir. That which is born of the Spirit yes, sir. produces spirit Yes, result. sir. That which is born of the Spirit yes, will sir. have Spirit's blessing. That right. which is born of the carnal right. may not have His blessing. Right, and you'll produce... One is death, one is right. life. You'll produce fruit Absolutely. in the Spirit. Absolutely. Pastor, we have uh, <clears throat> about a minute left. Talk to the uh, people for salvation, please. Yes. It is important and significant that you're watching today. Salvation is, impo is important because of this. The Bible says that God has pointed a day in which he will judge the world through Jesus Christ. All have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. You are going to face the judgment of God apart from Jesus Christ. But he so lovingly came and gave his life for you that you can be saved from your sin through faith in him alone. And so even right now, wherever you're sitting, if you just simply cry out to God, God, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I ask you to come into my heart. Save me from my sins. I turn my life over to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor, I want to thank you for being on the my show. My pleasure. Uh, remember, go to his website. Check out Leadership. I'm uh, Dr. Stephen Scavelli. This is End Time Revival Ministries. Uh, try to tune in next month. We'll have another exciting guest. And may the Lord richly bless you and be with you. Have a good night. God bless you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>